Hello, my name is Liana Silva, and I will be um, discussing and defending the rationality of the belief in God through Aquinas' five ways. Um, I will be using the Socratic dialogue as well as uh, modus ponens to uh, defend my argument. Um, to give a really brief overview, uh, Aquinas' five ways. First, the argument from motion. Second, the argument from causation. Third, the argument from possibility and necessity. Fourth, the argument from gradation. And fifth, the argument from governance. So I will be focusing on argument two to five briefly to show that belief in God is not unrational. And also to cover quickly, modus ponens goes as follows, if P then Q, P therefore Q. I will demonstrate that through science it is evident that belief in God is not unreasonable. So I might say to someone else, science does not suggest that belief in God is unreasonable. And they would respond with, belief in God is unreasonable because science demonstrates that there is no need for a God. And I would respond with, how does science suggest that there is no need for a God? And they might say, evidence suggests evolution, uh, Big Bang Theory, we can see in the world causation, mother and a father, procreate, have children, and so on, and we can see how everything has a cause and an effect. I would respond with, yes, I agree, everything does have a cause and an effect. And if you remove a causation, then the things to come would cease to exist. They would respond with, yes, if mother and father did not procreate at all, their line of future children would cease to exist and they would never come to existence because a causation was removed, therefore all the other causes can never come to be. And I would respond with, yes, even though in the universe and in the world that we know there are billions of causes, if we go back far enough, we could find an original cause. They would respond with, yes, an original cause such as the Big Bang. And I would say, yes, the original cause um, is the cause for everything else. And had this original cause never happened, everything else would have never existed. I'd also suggest that since the world does exist, there's evidence that there was an original cause. I would continue the argument by saying everything comes from something. They would agree everything must come from something. Something cannot simply come from nothing. I cannot ask for um, a burger to appear. It needs to come from something, from the ingredients, from the, the beef patty, the buns, the lettuce, the tomato, the sauces, and out of all these substances, I can then create something else. I cannot simply ask things to appear, which they would respond, yes, everything must come from something. And I would then point back to the argument of causation, and I would say, since everything must come from something, then something cannot come from nothing, to which we have already agreed. And I would say, there must have been an original causer, because even the Big Bang cannot simply come from nothing. And previous to the Big Bang, the idea and the concept is that there was nothing. And then the Big Bang happened, and through evolution and through billions of years, the world that we know now is created. At this point, I may have still not have convinced the other person that the original causer may or may not be God. I haven't suggested that yet, but that is the direction in which I am heading. And I would then say, I would also suggest that there are things that are generated and corrupted in the world that we live in. If something are able to be generated or corrupted, it is possible for those things to either exist or not to exist. Those are Aquinas' words. I would then suggest that moving on on this idea that everything must come from something is the idea of generation and or corruption. If I make a burger, I have a specific amount of time that I can eat this burger without it being corrupted. So I generated the burger and the burger can be corrupted and there will be a point in which I can no longer eat the burger because I will be sick if I were to eat it and it smells really bad and it doesn't taste good. And it comes to a point where it decomposes so much that you can't even tell it's a burger or that it was a burger. The other person would agree, yes, everything has a generation and a corruption, much like if 
a mother and a father procreate, they have a child, the child is young, the child grows up, becomes an adult, this child can then find a partner and procreate with said partner, and then have children of its own, the same adult will reach old age, and as it was generated at one point, it will then reach a point of corruption where this individual passes away, and it's a cycle of life. The other person would agree with this statement, everyone lives, everyone dies, I agree with this statement, everyone lives, everyone dies, and we can see this consistent pattern in the world around us. There is generation and there is corruption. I would then say at this point, we agree that everything has generation and corruption. We agree that something cannot simply come from nothing, and we agree that everything has a causation, and if a cause is to be removed, then everything post said cause would cease to exist. The other person would agree with this statement, and since we've both come to these conclusions together, if something has a cause, then it can then be the cause. Things do have a cause, therefore had a cause. And then I would say, I believe that there is a superior being and or God that can be the causation for all these other things. And I would say, for example, if things are generated and corrupted into the world, there must be a being outside of generation and corruption that could then cause for everything else to be generated and corrupted. There would be that cause and that effect. Because as we both agreed, everything needed to have a cause. And since something cannot come from nothing, there must have been something to cause everything else to come into existence. So the idea of even the Big Bang may be rather logical, but there must have been a causation for the Big Bang. This being that does not experience uh, generation or corruption, in this being is a necessity since you need something from the outside, outside of the limitations of generation or corruption in order to generate other things since we have agreed that something cannot come from that. So at which point I would say, so would we, can we not agree that science does not suggest that the belief in God is unrational.